beating them out. That case, as well as my life experience, my parents' experience of being interned during the war, um, had a profound influence on who I became. One, I decided to become a lawyer and fight for, for a war. Two, I was exposed to, in particular, the experience of poor people in this country, as well as immigrants. And I decided that I would commit myself to that, to the struggle, particularly of people of color in our criminal justice system. William Kunstler, Huey Newton, uh, Cesar Chavez, you know, Malcolm X, you know, these were the heroes that I grew up with and really informed who I became. I became a public defender. I've been a public defender for 22 years. I've dedicated my entire career to serving poor people. And what I see now, what I see now happening to San Francisco is the worst attack on poor people that I have ever seen. And we're not even conscious of a lot of what is happening, but I see it as a public defender through the eyes of the thousand clients that we represent, some of whom are in the criminal justice system, but every day are experiencing these horrible uh, cutbacks in every imaginable level of service. You know, San Francisco had three residential drug treatment programs that were closed in the last four weeks. Programs like Center for Special Problems that we have relied upon for decades have been pretty much wiped out out of existence. You know, if you're looking at what's happening to the fabric of this great city, uh, it's tragic. And so what this measure does is two things. It ensures that our city government is sustainable. Sustainability, that is a progressive value. Currently, we're spending $1.2 billion a year on city employee pension costs and health care costs. 1.2 billion. Now that may seem, well that's fine, that's only one out of every five dollars. Most of the other money goes to salaries. What if I was about to tell you, as the controller has told me, as the city retirement board has told me, that that number is going to double in the next five years. What if, as the retirement board said, every year it's going to cost us about a hundred million dollars more to pay just pension and health care premiums. And that's exactly what's happened. See, the way that the city pension system works is that any time the pension system goes down, and it has because of losses in the market and such not, what happens is that the city has to pay every year into that pension fund. Five years ago, we were paying $175 million. This year, we're paying $525 million. Next year, we're paying $625 million. The year after that, $675 million. Within five years, $818 million. These aren't numbers that I'm making up. These are numbers that are real. And if we don't act, the consequence will be ultimately that there will be a pension system. And you don't have to look farther than what's happening to our city now. Do you know that we spend 28 times more on pension and health care costs than we, than we do fixing the streets? Do you know that this is the first year of San Francisco's history where there's no summer school for kids? It's a separate budget for the school district. We don't have any money in the general fund to give to the school district to keep summer school open. While at the same time, we spend about 130 times more on pension costs alone. And you can always look at extreme cases. You know, I'm not going to bring up you know, Bell, California, I don't think Tim will either. But we, we do have our own case of a police officer last year who earned $516,000. Not even the police chief earned more than the President of the United States. And he receives a pension, he retired, of about $250,000 a year. Now, unquestionably, our police work hard and are entitled to a pension. But come on, that comes out to about $8 million over his lifetime. Come on, folks. I mean, that's not a pension fund. That's a trust fund. And, and you're paying for it. And our kids are paying for it. 
The other thing that the measure does is that it requires city employees to pay more for their health care. Now right away you think, oh my God, how can you possibly do that in this time? Well, I want you to consider two things. There are people who are losing access, poor people, to health care every day when we're seeing the kind of cuts that we are to public health, to the programming. If you, any of you work in the nonprofit uh, community, you will notice that these programs are getting cut wholesale. In some cases, 100% of their funding gone. And we're the city of St. Francis that prides ourselves on these services. The second thing is that our health care costs alone are about $665 million. Not only really that, I don't think Tim will dispute this, we have a $4 billion, this is according to the controller, unfunded liability. That means that we've made promises that we're going to pay for health care that we don't have the money for. What's that ultimately going to mean? It's going to mean if we don't do something, everybody is going to lose their health care. That's why as a city employee, I'm stepping up and saying we need to do something about this. Because if we don't, the consequences are going to be worse not only for all San Franciscans, but for city employees. Now, I know that pension and health care costs are seen as a third rail of politics. But the bottom line is that we all know that if we don't do anything, we are going to wind up like Berlin or like Los Angeles. Right? Los Angeles right now, they've closed their city services two days a week. They're spending one-third of their general fund on pensions and health care costs. We will be there very shortly. This is a proactive measure. It is a moderate measure. It is the kind of common sense reform that progressives stand for. Because as progressives, we stand for not justice for a few, not justice for some of us, not justice for just us, but justice for all of us. And that's what this is about. Thank you very much.